First of October. It's not obviously. It's the second. I've left this really late. Um, second of October. Um, but this is the first review of what is intended to be 31 consecutive horror film viewings reviews. I'm not going to watch them all consecutively. That would be disastrous. Um, Forgive the background noise, I'm driving to Exeter while I'm recording this uh, because I figured it's an opportunity to do it so it doesn't impede on my evening. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to attempt to remove some of this drone, by which I mean the background noise, not my voice, in audacity. Um, I don't know how long, uh, I don't know how you do that, so this might just be quite droney. Um, so this first one is Fright Night. It's the 2011 uh, remake starring, uh, oh, I don't know who's in it, I can't remember. Um, it's difficult to know what to say about it really because there are bits in it that I quite liked and there are bits in it that aren't so good. Um, like there's a scene um, towards the I don't know, the third act of the film where um, you see the, the vampire's, I don't know his name is, can't remember, uh, vampire's house, and he's covered over all the windows with newspaper so that he can sort of protect himself from the sunlight. Um, which I can't believe it is in any way effective. Nevertheless, um, and so there's a shot of um, something in the foreground. Again, I can't remember what. This is going to be very much a theme with these reviews. Just things I don't remember. Um, but in the background is this detail of the windows being covered. And I thought in the moment, oh, that's good. It's quite clever, isn't it? Because what they've done there is they've, they've had a character who's a vampire cover up the window so he's protected from the sunlight, but not drawn attention to it. So it's quite a subtle little blink and you'll miss it kind of detail. And then the next shot, or at least the next scene, or you know, later on in the film at least, attention is drawn singularly to the fact that the windows are covered over in newspaper, which just sort of ruined it. Um, so there's things that I liked and things I didn't like. I didn't feel the CGI had aged particularly well. Um, no, that's no one's fault, really, apart from everybody responsible for the CGI. Um, I was put in mind when I was talking to a friend of mine about it, Pete, who may join us at some point uh, for these reviews. Um, Pete is uh, an old friend of mine, by which I mean he's a friend that I don't really like, but he's quite old. Um, and the observation we both made was that the, uh, the sort of dusting effects in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which was obviously the TV series that long predates this film, by a few years, I would think. Um, it, it, it's aged in such a way that it looks the same as that. Now, I would expect the budget for a TV series to be sufficiently limited that effects like that are going to look a little bit clumsy and amateurish. Um, but not so much. I wouldn't expect that from a film or from a film. Um, so there was that, that that we agreed on. Um, I never actually got around to asking him what he thought. Um, I'm hoping he'll do me a little soundbite on WhatsApp that I can include uh, towards the end of the second opinion. Um, I guess the thing is, with Fright Night, what I was left with, like, so, um, Jesus, what's his name? David um, Tennant. David Tennant puts in 
a David Tennant-esque over-the-top performance the way that he always does um, which works in this context um, just kind of a really flamboyant flancy character um, he um, like that, that, see this is another thing I remembered from watching it the first time ages ago that there is a moment where he tries to deploy some fancy weapon that he's got for it to not work properly and for him to go like, oh fucking eBay <laughs> and for him to complain about having got it off eBay um, and in the moment oh that's funny and I remember that line and I was kind of looking forward to it but half an hour or so before that line arrived there's a bit where he talks about buying loads of things off eBay which I didn't remember from the first time of watching it and I was a bit like oh they've kind of set that joke up there um, I think that joke is funnier if you haven't heard him mention eBay and it's only in the moment of that joke being delivered that you realise that actually this character that has all these fancy weapons and things buys things off eBay because that's sort of somewhat preposterous you could kind of imagine him travelling the lengths and breadths of the earth collecting these trinkets from like I don't know um, wise men and and moguls and things whatever um, or going to like um, flea markets and, and happening upon like an ancient relic it's like, oh, how did that end up here and obviously finding those things on eBay is just slightly more ridiculous um, but that joke isn't as funny I don't think after having had it set up earlier um, it's a personal thing but obviously the whole thing's personal because it's a film review isn't it I should probably turn the fan off. Maybe that's, that's probably helped. I've just noticed the waveform of what I'm recording gets slightly thinner um, as I've noticed something that I could have done earlier to limit the sound problem. So that's annoying. Um, I get, yeah, I guess the thing that I was left wrestling with watching it was just the sort of overarching pointlessness of it. Like... It's fine, like it's enjoyable. There's no point during the film that I'm bored. Um, there's certain moments, as I say, that I enjoyed. I thought, as I say, I think David Tennant put in a good turn, um, and so he kind of steals the show in most scenes. It is in the way that David Tennant does. Um, and there's, you know, there's some laughs to be had along the way, and um, some of the little horror aspects are, are right. Um, I like the "99 Problems" song at the end. That's 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 fun. Um, it's enjoyable. It's just, why does it exist? You know, like, there's already a Fright Night. I've seen it. I don't remember much about it. I would imagine it is more or less tread for tread similar to the remake, or vice versa. Um, I just, I don't know, I don't know why it is. Why is it? It's all, like, there's already a Fright Night, and a Fright Night Part 2, pretty confident in saying, which I actually don't think I've ever seen. Um, I just don't know that we needed it. I don't know that it does enough with the formula of horror films or, or the, the sort of the legend and lore of vampire uh, lore. Um, or I, I just don't think it does enough different or original or even especially well that there's any point to it. Um, and I guess you could reason that argument against most things. Like, I really liked the original Paranormal Activity, and because I really like haunted house films generally, it's the only, it's the only real thing in the horror genre that actually frightens me. Um, so I like all the Paranormal Activities, even the last one. Um, and I'm aware that Ghost Dimension is no one's favourite entry into the franchise, um, nor is it mine, come to that. Um... Like, I enjoy it for what it is, and I enjoy all of the films in the series for what they are. But I'm p happy to admit that none of them really does anything new. After the original one, which kind of was original, like, there's not many films prior to that that did what Paranormal Activity did. The other films just kind of, you know, just follow the same pattern. This happens and this happens, and then, oh, we better start setting up cameras, and then it just gets worse, and then it ends. And they all do that. It's all the same, but I, I enjoy all of them. Um, 
but I didn't enjoy Fright Night as much as I enjoyed any of those. And as I say, what I'm left with is just this pervasive sense of pointlessness um, about the film. Not that's not a personal, that's not a cry for help. Um, I d- yeah, I just I just don't see the point. So I enjoyed it. Would I watch it again? Probably not. Not for a long time. Did it do anything particularly new or original? Not really. Was it particularly scary? No. Was it hilarious? No. Um, it and also the end just sort of happened like the the besting of the baddie, which you know had been built up and built up from the beginning. Like we're basically told by David Tennant's character, like, oh, this guy is basically impossible to kill. So good luck with that. Just sort of kills him. Just sort of ends like, ah, oh, that's that's the end of that. And then there's a bit at the end, like a sort of epilogue, which you sort of expect to do something interesting, and and leave you going, oh. But it doesn't. It's just the the main character Charlie. The only character's name I actually remember. Um, I think that's his name. Um, him and his girlfriend, um, and us. And then yeah, then it just sort of finishes, and they're um, they're in David Tennant's flat or whatever it is he lives in. I don't know. Um, about to um, sort of consummate their relationship, um, and so I don't. Well, I'm not that bothered. You know, I wasn't. I wasn't invested in that part of the story. Um, oh, good for you. I, you know, I do, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just don't, I don't get, I don't get why it exists. I kind of feel it's like when you get a song cover, if the song cover is just, you know, beat for beat, the same as the original, what's the point? Other than someone having the gumption to go, do you know what? I reckon I could record that song just as well as the original, which is a bit arrogant because invariably covers aren't as good as the original. Um, which I'm mean, that's a digression. I just don't see the point, and that that kind of ruins it a bit. There aren't really very many original horror films. They all tend to follow the same basic formulas. Um, just I don't know. Just why? Why is it? Um, in terms of ratings, I don't really do ratings because they're arbitrary and pointless. Um, a bit like Fright Night. Come back soon for the next episode of John Bolton's podcast. What horror movie will he be reviewing? Who knows? Who cares?